Hello, my amigos. Welcome one. Welcome all. It's time for another exciting edition of the show with no name exclusively on Vaughn Radio. And folks, get ready to rock because it's time for liftoff. Eight, seven, six, seven, six five, five, four, four three. Countdown with two, me. One. Zero. Here we go. Ignition. Lift off. Lift off. 30 minutes after the hour. Come on, folks. We got this. Get ready. Hold on to your hats. Strap on your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelts. Hold on to your hats. Get ready for the ride of your it's life. The show with no it's show with no name. On Vaughn Radio. It's the show with no name. Let's go. All right, all right. Welcome, welcome, show with no namers. It's time for another exciting English class slash radio show. Call it what you want. It's the show with no name. It's Vaughn Radio, and I hope you guys are warmed up. Fijaos en la pronunciación. Warm up. La D lo ponemos con el up. Yo sé que cuando lo escribimos va con el warmed. Pero cuando lo decimos es warmed up. Are you guys warmed up? Dilo conmigo en voz alta. As I said, it's in your hands. Está en tus manos. Do you want to make this class, do you want to make Vaughn Radio merely a listening exercise? That's great. It's awesome. That's, I mean, hey, right off the bat, hey. <laughs> awesome. You're doing something to enrich yourself. You're learning a language. That's awesome. Now, if you want to work on speaking and pronunciation, that's in your hands. That's where you're going to have to vocalize. You say the same thing as vocalizar, right? Or say it aloud. Any, Especially if something is new to you or if I highlight something and say, guys, careful, because uh, there are common mistakes right over here, up ahead, adelante. And the great thing about the participation is, first, you guys don't make too many mistakes. But when you do, we look at those mistakes as blessings, como bendiciones, right? Those mistakes really are blessings because it's highlighting, destacando, it's highlighting a, a problematic area, a, an area where maybe not just the person who made the mistake is having trouble. But maybe it's a false friend or maybe it's, you know, one of these things, that, as I say, that a lot of the, the most common mistakes come from literal translation. I have 45 years, not in English. It's I am 45 years old or I'm 45. Ojo, no se dice I'm 45 years. See, you got two options, not three. So these are these are certain things that I've heard time and time again. So the more you participate the more I can help you guys and we can figure out what these problem areas are and we can work on them. We can drill them, as we say. So you can expect a lot of fun. You can expect a lot of learning. You can also expect a lot of challenges. And speaking of challenges, we've got a trivia night right around the corner. It's November 30th. Vaughn Radio Trivia Nights at Roll Madrid. In a world where everybody knows the answers, knows the answers. only three people have the questions. questions. Only three people. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there, Rob. I'm all right. Hey, guys, it's Vaughn Trivia Night. Bah, 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 bah. Woo -woo. 
Um, 30th of November, it's the lunchtime cruise turn at the trivia night. And that's me, the Natch, Andy. Yes, indeed. You're going to see all three of us at Real Madrid in Calle Amaniel number 23. Calle Amaniel number 23, 8.30, November 30th. See you there. Yum, 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 yum. It sounds like my daughter a little bit. Did you guys get me my permission? No, I'm joking. <laughs> guys, that is going to be, it promises to be, I think decís lo mismo, no promete said, it promises to be an amazing night. It's free. Obviously, you'll pay for your food and drink. I, I don't have to explain that. Uh, but it, the there's no entrance fee. There's no minimum. There's no, you know, if you want to have a Coca-Cola and just sip on it for three hours, because, hey, Let's let's be honest. Uh, you know, times are tough right now, but I think it's so worth it to go to this event if you can. It's November thirtieth. It's going to be a triple threat. It's hosted by Rob Grams, Andy Vaughn, and Nacho. So we're going to get some Spanish flavor in there from Madrid. That's our technician, our star technician. I mean, in the end, Nacho's so much more than just a technician. First. I don't like the word technician, even though that's what they're called in their contract. I consider them more sound designers, right? Producers, because uh, aside, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm sure many of you who know the company well, you know this. But Nacho is so much more than just a sound technician. Not that there's anything wrong with being a sound technician. I love sound. You know it. It's my thing. But he has voiced so many different things here at Vaughn Radio. You'll hear him on our different radio ads in Nuestras Cunas. And he's, uh, he's done so much. He helped me, uh, I think, um, I can't remember, I think English Everywhere. He worked on English Everywhere. Juanjo, who used to work with us, he worked on English on the go. And remember, now you've got This Book is the Milk 2 and uh, it comes with audio. And do you know who produced that audio? Yours truly. That's right. Hey, you know what? I was working with Damian. I said, you know what? Let me produce this. I know it's going to take more time for me to do it. And, you know, it's, it's a commitment. It's un compromiso. And I don't really have to do it. But I said, you know what? I'm recording it. We recorded it at my, my home studio. Uh, this is the the audio for this book is the milk too. If you haven't heard it yet, it's funny. It's off the cuff. Off the cuff is uh, improvisado. I mean, we're looking at the book and going through it, but we're playing, we're laughing, and we're teaching you English the same way we do here with a little pop culture, with a little fun, a little bit of singing, a little bit of dancing, and all that stuff. So if you haven't, if you if you have this book is the re milk then you should have access to that. The only thing is, I don't know how. You have to contact Vaughn, okay? Uh, we can figure it out. Co contact Ruben Palomero or Vaughn Tienda, and they can give you all the information. And if you, that's if you have the re-milk, which if you have it, it's a collector's item. If not, this book is the milk too. It's been re-released with a new cover. Inside that book, usually it's on the first couple pages, like all of our materials, you'll have a, a website that you have to go to. And you go to that website and you punch in, to punch in is teclear, you punch in that code and uh, voila, you can download the audio and you can put it on your smartphone or whatever you feel like doing. But folks, we've got to move on or not even move on. We should start. I don't think we've done any sections yet. So here it is, folks. Today's pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz.
That's right, amigos. It is the pop quiz here on the show with no name. And this is where I steal content. Hey, I don't mean I plagiarize it. I give credit where credit is due. Doy el mérito donde se debe, obviously. But at the same time, uh, I use all the amazing content that my friends here at Vaughn Radio are producing on a daily basis. So not only are they producing a radio show, which we, we get paid for that, obviously, but the social media stuff, the videos, the extra posts, the challenges, that's all stuff we do on our own time. So A, I want to make sure you're following us. B, I want to make sure you're getting it. And if you like what we're doing, uh, you know, the videos that we share, the translations, well, just share it or give us a like. Remember, all that stuff helps. And I hate to do, you know, I, I refuse to do that on my videos. I know everybody's like, guys, don't forget, if you like the video, give it a like and don't forget. I just can't. I can't. So uh, from time to time, I just have to remind you guys, I hate to, I, you know, because I would hate, I know you have to, because that's how things get seen, but I don't want to be that guy. Okay, don't forget to give us a like and blah, 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 blah. But it is very important. Uh, it's the algorithm of the night. Oh, night. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know I love to sing. Another guy who loves to sing is my buddy Dave Boys. And if you've never heard his show, The Salad, you're missing out. The Salad, fun, informative, interactive radio. Two, three, oh, welcome to the salad. Thanks for listening today. Woo. I really have a lot of things that I would like to say. Yeah. It's a funny, informative radio show. show featuring lots of things you really want to know. So it's, it's time to get on with the show. Yeah, it's time to get on with the show. Show. So let's go. Yes, bring on the salad. Come on. How does that? I mean, that music, I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> it gets me going. Me motiva. It gets me going. And talking about motivation, well, today, Dave's translation that he's given us has something to do with this idea. So folks, here's the translation for today's pop quiz. And then in just a moment, we're gonna go on over and take a look at all the comments that are coming in right now in our virtual classroom. All right, here's the translation. It's pretty easy, I think. We'll see what you guys come up with. Se reduce a una cuestión de motivación. Okay, se reduce a una cuestión de motivación. Okay, sounds like I'm rapping. I'm not. Now, remember, if you haven't heard Dave's show, you can listen to it every afternoon here on Vaughn Radio. If you can't listen to it live like the rest of our shows, you can find them on iVox, Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, and all the rest of them. And also remember, you've got my weekly podcast, comes out every Friday, For Your English, self-produced, autoproducido. And last week, we looked at Elvis. This coming week, we're going to take a look at chocolate. And the following week, which will be the last one until Christmas, we're going to wrap up uh, production in December. And that last episode is going to be inspiring. I hope so. At least it's with Rob Graham's. And we're going to take a look at art. And what better person than an artist? Uh, a great friend of mine, Rob Grams, who you all know. So don't forget, 
Um, you know, if you can't listen to us live, no problem. Download the app. If you have the Vaughn Radio app, you've got access to everything. If you're a podcast listener like I am, real simple. All you have to do is go to your favorite podcast platform, search for the show with no name, search for Vaughn Radio, search for For Your English. All right, let's see what our students have to say about life. There's Nihad checking in. Front row, center. And Nihad says, good morning, friends. Good morning, Nihad. What's up? Great to see you. Great to read your name in today's roll call. Asistencia, ¿no? Cuando cogemos la asistencia. There's Diego Alonso. Wait a second. I recognize that name. Oh, yeah. That's my daughter's grandpa. That's my dad. What's up, dad? I said, we are family. I got all my crew and me. Oh, oh, yeah. Good morning, Dad. He says, good morning, Alberto. Friends and family. Greetings from Agua Dulce, Almería, Spain. Is anybody a little bit jealous of my dad? I am. <laughs> all right, there's ESD, Mr. Positivity. And ESD says, good morning, teacher and classmates. I am ready to learn. Are you? Well, there's no doubt in my mind that ESD is going to make the most of today's class. He also says, hello, Don Diego. <laughs> He says, I wish I was in Almeria to visit you. Oh, man. See, I told you I wasn't the only one. <laughs> Monse says, hi there. Hi there. Como, Hola. <laughs> It's like a cute, fun way of saying, hola. Hi there. Como el howdy tejano. I love that one too. Howdy. All right. Yo nunca diga howdy, partner. How you Lo digo en plan howdy. You know? So I think it's that same thing like hasta luego. You don't really say it saying it. You say it like, ah, oh, well, say it for fun. A little chuckle. Let's see. Nihad says, thank you, Diego, for giving us this talented English teacher. Thank you. Thank you, Nihad. Thank you. Let's see, we've got Akasha, who says, morning, double A and friends. I listen to the show every day while I'm driving to my job. But today I'm online. Yeah, awesome. Akasha, thanks so much for tuning in. A couple tweaks, a couple corrections. Ajustes. I listen to the show, right? Remember, we, cuando empleamos listen, es con to. So I listen to the show every day, dos palabras, sino es everyday cotidiano. These are very common, mis these are everyday mistakes, una palabra. Everyday, cada día, como en español, dos palabras. Well, I'm driving to my job, but today I'm online. Well, great. Great to have you with us today and every day. There's Born to Iron Man checking in. He says, morning, folks. Nice to be another awesome day, enjoying the best show in the whole wide world with all of you. Let's hit the road. Yeah, I like this expression. Creo que lo hemos visto. We're going to hit the ground running. You know, if you hit the ground running, empiezas a todo gas. Think about it. No, das al suelo y ya estás corriendo. No, el momento que aprendes a andar. You hit the ground running. I love that one. German says, morning, guys. Is it a good idea for us to arrive guns blazing with our best English, Alberto? Oh, yeah. You better be armed to the teeth. I think you say the same thing in Spanish. Good morning to you. Cristina. Chris, great to have you on board. She says, morning, double A and mates. Long time no see. I've been traveling since the day after trivia night. Oh, awesome, Chris. We missed you. Hey, I think I can speak on behalf of all of us. She says, please let me say thank you to you, Alberto, for your effort and generosity. We missed you. Chris is also referring to the last trivia night that we had. And she says, and to my mates that night, Raquel, Alex, Victor, and Leonardo, It was wonderful to meet them. And of course, thanks to Rob, Andy, Nacho, Fitz, and Kyle, and the crew. Yeah. There's Leonardo. He's like, somebody say my name? Leonardo says, I think if I say that you have greatly improved your sound production skills, 
I would be making a sound judgment. That was with my mouth, all right? <laughs> nice double trouble. Sound. Sano. No, the, the sano juicio. I mean that way. Like if that was a sound decision, decision, it means you were thinking when you made the decision. Leonardo, I see you are a poet and you know it. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for noticing. I'm having fun with it. You know, the more I can get used to the technical stuff, the more I can do what I came to do and teach you guys English. Luis says, good morning, double A. I, wait, wait, wait. I didn't read it right. Luis says, good morning, double A. Mejor, no? I think that's how you meant it. Let's see. Uh, all right. We've got some people participating over here in the virtual classroom. And remember, Dave gave us today's Say What soundbite. So if it's really difficult, don't blame me. All right, so uh, the translation was, se reduce a una cuestión de motivación. Okay, so the first person to participate is our great friend, born to Iron Man, and he says, it all boils down to a question of motivation. Is that correct? You bet your bottom dollar. <laughs> pues claro que sí. I love that one. It all boils down to, it boils, se reduce. Think about boil es hervir. Remember, there's an, an episode of FYI on cooking. And you can bet that we talk not only about literal cooking, but, you know, like I just said, uh, one of my favorite expressions in English. Now we're cooking with gas. Ahora estamos cocinando con gas. Que significa ahora está, ahora está moviendo la cosa. So there's so many, you know, I, another one. If you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Si no aguantas la presión, no te unes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, no te quejes que es difícil. Pues esto es para los duros. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, I see, remember, uh, Akasha, I'll remind you, we got to capital letters, you know, use punctuation. Let's pretend. Vamos a fingir que es una clase de inglés. Okay, uh, Nihad says it balled down. Nope, it, it's... So it would be it boils down to, or it all, I usually say it with the all in there. It all boils down to. Let's see, Salvador says it comes down to motivation. Salvador, excellent, excellent. It comes down to motivation, okay? Now, I I'm, I'm, I was waiting. I love that you said it comes down to, it boils down to, but you all use the word motivation. I was hoping you would use a synonym for motivation. Now, don't get me wrong. Let's, in fact, hey, I think as always, you guys were magical. But, 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 does anybody know that word I'm looking for? Does anybody, because you could say it all boils down to a question of motivation or it all boils down to a question of drive. We've looked at this word. I know we've looked at it many times. It's a word I love as well. So write this down. And, and I know it's a word you all know. Why? Conducir. I mean, it's one of, we learn that word when we learn drink, eat, drive, right? It's one of those basic verbs that I think most people know. So first, let's conjugate it because I've heard people say driving como la tercera columna. And you know what? That's driving me crazy. <laughs> Eso es driving. Driving. Pero yo no digo la G porque soy americano y es mi derecho. It's my right not to say that G, okay? <laughs> but driven is the participle. So let's practice it every day. Y no es solo conducir, no es solo eh, motivación, right? But it, it also is volver con loco. Think about it. Let, let's use it in that context. Every day, he drives me crazy. Presente. Algo habitual. We know it from the song, uh, Fine Young Cannibals. She drives me crazy. I can't help myself. She drives me crazy. Yesterday, she drove me crazy. Lately, she's, que sería she has, she's driven me crazy. So, if drive is motivation, 
How do you say él está super motivado? He's really driven, right? So again, if you know how to conjugate drive, drove, driven, then you're not just learning the verb conducir. As you see, it has so many other uses, just like a lot of stuff in English. That's why we have a double trouble section. Uh, what do you think the joke section is? The joke section is uh, double meaning, sometimes triple meanings. But guys, we can't get into those sections right now because we've got to go to our first commercial break. But don't worry, we'll be back shortly. Es otra forma de decir soon. We'll be back shortly with tons more show with no name. So stick around. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name on Vaughn Radio. Don't forget, you can warm up for the show with my buddy Fitz, his program and his philosophy is no excuses. After today's show, you can have tons of fun with Jules Linares and her program, Let's Get Random. Remember, you've got amazing shows all day long from the break of break of dawn, desde el amanecer, until the evening. And you've even got some stuff on the weekend, which, as you know, our show Speaking Football you can hear well you can hear a lot of you can hear this show on the weekend too obviously it's not a live show but as i always tell you guys what difference does it make if you're going to learn it doesn't matter if i'm here right now or if you're hearing my voice after or if you're seeing my image if you're going to learn you're going to learn right doesn't matter if was this yesterday was this tomorrow is tomorrow show yeah i don't know what i, I think don't worry about it uh just pay attention and play along because the way I've designed this show, and I think all of us, is for it to be evergreen. Evergreen. Uh, it's the kind of tree that's green. It's a Christmas tree. Is, is an evergreen tree. Certain types of trees. And evergreen content means I usually don't talk too much about, I, I talk about pop culture without talking about current events, actualidad. Now, obviously, we have our trivia nights and all of that, and that stuff. You say, oh, wait, well, that was last November. Doesn't matter, though. The content is going to be just as good if it was yesterday's show or if it was a show from six years ago. Okay, maybe I'll sound a little bit younger, and maybe my voice is a few octaves lower, because as you get older, your voice gets deeper. 
That's what I've noticed <laughs> from almost everybody. All right. Well, folks, we've got so much to do. So let's get right back into it with a section we call Say What? Say What? What? That's right, amigos. That's right. It's the Say What Soundbite, only on the show with no name. And remember, this is where you're going to hear a famous person speaking, and you guys got to break it down. You got to tell me what's going on. Eh, desglosarlo, ¿no? romperlo en trozos, eh, desmenuzar. How would you say? Hacerlo fácil para que yo lo entienda. We're going to pretend here that I have no, absolutely no idea what just happened. I didn't hear this, okay? So I'm going to step out and go to the bathroom. Not true. We're pretending. Estamos fingiendo, okay? I'm going to step out for a second. I'm going to play this for you. And what I want you to do is tell me what you heard because, damn it, I missed it. Lo perdí. And I really didn't want to, you know? So if you guys could just relay the information back to me, if you could report back to me with the information in your best English, that would be awesome. All right? So here we go, folks. This is the Say What Soundbite for the first time. Please write down what you hear. I think New York is wonderful. It's like a dream. It always makes European cities look like villages to me. I think of a city going up, don't you? Well, it has to go to the sky. All right. Interesting, to say the least, right? Very interesting. Hmm. All right. Uh, I'll play it for you again, and then we'll discuss. Lo, lo hablamos, okay? Now, um, I don't just want to know, like, what's going on, but I want your observations about the person's voice. Also, do you recognize where the person's from? Okay, I know you're... Oh, the person's from Oak Park, Illinois. I, I don't mean that. I mean, like, what part from the northeast of the United States, from, okay, then we can be more specific. Obviously, by the end of the show, we tell you what kind of accent you're hearing, okay? And we see if you were right and how much of the information you got. And this is all, I mean, as you know, this has many, many objectives in this section. It's not just listening, it's dictation, it's expressing your opinion in English. So here it is for the second time. Please write down what you hear. I think New York is wonderful. It's like a dream. It always makes European cities look like villages to me. I think of a city going up, don't you? Well, it has to go to the sky. All right. There you go, my amigos. There you go. That was the second listen. You're going to hear it an additional two times, and then we'll break it, break it down. Let's take a look what we've got over here. Some people participating over here. Akasha says, thank you for the corrections. Hey, just doing my job. You know, when people say, hey, thanks, Albert. I'm like, just doing my job. <laughs> Leonardo says, hello, Chris. See, I told you we all missed you. I'm happy you are back. And the pleasure was entirely mine. Wait, wait, wait. Ours, Leo. Nuestro, no solo tuyo. Don't take all the pleasure of having, of hanging out with Chris to yourself. No, he's <laughs> Vero, there she is. You heard me talking about chocolate, didn't you? And you, you, Vero said, did somebody say chocolate? I know it. I know it. And there she is. She popped up. Uh, morning, beautiful people. Morning to you, Vero. All right. Uh, Monse says, it all now narrows down to driven. Uh, okay, it narrows down to, um, it's a good, it's a good option. The only thing is, 
I would change the end. It all narrows down to being driven or drive. So remember, drive is motivacion and driven is motivado. Sorry if I didn't clear that up before. There's Lena Marie. Hello, cousin. Good morning. Tuning in from the USA. My country tis of the sweet land of liberty. Let freedom ring. What's up, cuz? USA in the house. My homeland. You guys know that series, Homeland? Well, eso significa patria. And it's interesting because I feel like Spain is my homeland, too. And when people say, but you're Spanish or American? I'm like, I didn't know I had to decide. I have both passports. <laughs> I mean, it depends. How much money are you willing to give me? <laughs> where can I, uh, where can I uh, have a better life? And I guess right now, the answer is Spain. But everybody obviously looks for opportunities in different places. I didn't even expect to be in Spain, as many of you guys know. If you had asked me, you know, six, 18 years ago, oh my God, oh geez, I'm old. You know, when I was living in New York City and said, hey, Alberto, you see yourself living in Spain one day, doing a radio show and uh, writing books and teaching English and having a daughter and a lovely family. No, <laughs> what are you, high? Estás colocado, me? <laughs> I'm never leaving New York. You're gonna have to drag my dead body off this island of Manhattan here. And look at that. <laughs> Fast forward, and what do you get? Well, you get what you have here. <laughs> All right, let's take a look and see what you guys heard in our Say What soundbite. Um, I'll start if you want. It sounds like somebody who has a frail voice. Uh, frail would be, I guess, maybe say a way of saying weak, debil. A frail voice voice you know it doesn't sound like someone who's like i don't I don't know maybe she's having difficulty breathing he or she i don't i don't want to i'll let you guys uh fill in the blanks there all right well let's see let's see i've got some people participating already chris valrol says i heard a woman whose accent i can't place well i'll tell you something chris just the way you've expressed that is beautiful so i heard a woman whose accent i can't place I think she's talking about New York. She thinks it's a wonderful city and she sounds delighted. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Excellent job, Chris. You're back and you're already on a roll. Estás in racha. There's Leonardo. Leonardo says, I heard an elderly lady excellent observation and she's saying that new york city is a city that is constantly growing growing to the sky and it also has many green areas the big apple makes european cities look like small towns wow dude really good ear and you said a lot in just a few sentences and that's what we're looking for you know, are you these kind of people who just talk for four hours and then you're like, that person said three things, right? Or are you somebody who you say three things and there's like six, you know, six kernels, uh, semillas in there, you know, that you said. Salvador says it sounds like a lady talking to someone with whom she's very close. Interesting observation. She goes on by saying, oh, my God, sound, you sound like a native, Salvador that New York is amazing and makes look, so cuidado, and makes European cities look, o sea, look by después de European cities, and makes European cities look like villages. Vamos a parar un segundo, todos a pronunciar esta palabra, villages, no village, villages, villages. She wants to go there with her listener. All right, interesting, very interesting, guys. Wonderful job. In fact, this is for everybody. Nihad says, in my opinion, in my opinion, I think she is a non-native woman. She's talking about New York, making a comparison with European cities. She thinks that New York going up well, 
is going up well or growing. Hmm. Okay. Also, she is amazed by this city. Absolutely. So somebody who is in awe, en asombro con Nueva York, asombradí, in awe. ¿Conocéis la palabra awesome? Well, you can say in awe, porque dicen awesome es muy como guay, qué guay, awesome. Pero I was in awe, suenas como poeta. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's how life works there. So, all right, let's see, who else? Excuse me, I just hit the volume on accident. Monse says, I heard two not so young American ladies visiting New York City and talking about how mesmerized they are for the beauty and the magnificence of this city and how amazed they are by its sky oh, 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 skyscraper. <laughs> All right, I've got to tell you something, Monse. This is a common mistake here. <laughs> so common that uh, my partner, mi socio, uh, Damian Moya, you know him as Barrancas from El Hormiguero TV show, a sky crapper es un cagador de cielo. Okay? So skyscraper con una P. <laughs> it's not, hey, Monse, it's not your mistake. You can't claim it. Everybody, I've heard a lot of people say it and write it like that. Oh, there are a lot of skycrappers. <laughs> Skyscrap. I'm like, um, nope, no, no, no. So to scratch is rascar, but, but also scrape is another way. So think sky, scrape. It scrapes the sky. It's a sky scraper. I love it though. <laughs> Uh, I, I, Damian, every time, you know, and I think the first time he said it was when we were in New York, we went to New York and he's like, oh, I love the sky crappers. I'm like, the sky crappers are the pigeons. <laughs> o sea, los que cagan desde el cielo, those are, uh, what you call palomas. And it's interesting. We have two different words for this animal. So we've got a pigeon. It's the one you see in every city, right? And the white one is called, like the, the logo on the bar of soap, Dove. All right, well, folks, we've got to move on to today's Spelling Bee. 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 That's right, folks. That's right. It is our spelling bee only on the show with no name. And as always, I'm going to spell some words for you today. They are names. Son nombres. They're names. And so that means the first letters of each word will be capitalized, right? Just like in your name. The first time you can bet I am going to freaking fly. Like the Rocky song. Gonna fly now. Na na na. Na 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 na. The only lyrics I know is Gonna fly now. Y hasta ahí. Hasta yo no sé lo que dicen ahí. Y yo siempre decía Rocky Five. No dice Rocky Five porque salió mucho antes que Rocky Five. <laughs> do, 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 do. I'm sure there are lyrics and they're pretty good, but uh, I, I don't know them. All right, so here we go, folks. We've got today's spelling bee. This is round one, and I am gonna fly. So hold on to your hats. The first person in today's spelling bee is H O W A R D space S T E R N. The next one is R U S H space L I M B A U G H. The next one is A-D-A-M space C-A-R-O-L-L-A. -L -L The next one is C-A-S-E-Y space K-A-S-E-M. The next one is R-U-S-S-E-L-L -L space B-R-A-N-D. And the last one is O-P-I-E space 
ampersand space a n t h o n y oh my goodness whoa as always i'll give you a little uh audio clue hmm <laughs> hmm all right so six names i just gave you let's see if anybody got all of these names Let's see. All right, folks. I think we might have a winner on our hands here. Let's check it out. I want to confirm here because this was really tough. First one. All right. There's a comma misplaced. We'll, we'll take it, though. It's okay. Uh, da, da. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the master of spelling bees, born to Iron Man. Excellent job, born to Iron Man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, honestly, I don't know if I would have gotten it. So I'm being dead serious, dude. <laughs> Definitely pre-coffee? No way. If it had been pre-coffee, si hubiese sido antes de tomarme el café, I definitely wouldn't have got them. <laughs> so wow, 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 wow. Impressive, impressive stuff. All right, now this is for the rest of us. Now, uh, those of us who are just mere mortals. <laughs> All right, this is also where I'm going to be nice. I'm going to read it at a pace where you should be able to get it if you're at least an intermediate level of English, okay? Are you ready? Here we go. This is the round where I'm a nice guy and I'm not an SOB. Round two. The first one is H O W. A R D space S T E R N. The second one is R U S H space L I M B A U G H. The third one is A D A M space C A R. O L L A. The fourth one is C A S E Y space K A S E M. The next one, the fifth one, R U S S E L L space B R A N D. And the last one is O P. I E space ampersand space A N T H O N Y. All right. Now we've also got Chris Valrol as well. Nice job, Chris. And Chris says they are all radio personalities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what am I doing? Am I syntonizing the radio? Sintonizando? No, I'm tuning. I'm tuning the radio. I'm looking for my favorite station, which is obviously Vaughn Radio. All right, so tune in. Sintoniza, tune in. Excellent job, as I said. A nice round of applause for your super show with no namers. Born to Iron Man and Chris Valrol. They are head and shoulders above the rest, at, at least in the spelling bee. No, head and un peldaño por encima de los demás, including me. <laughs> o sea, me pongo en ese grupo con los segundos there. Okay, but don't worry. Most people would need that. Dime una tercera palabra otra vez. You know, at least me. I, you know, I, I can't like listen and write things down at the same time. So I naturally get lost. So it's, it's so impressive. Absolutely impressive it's remarkable so great job guys excellent work as we said these were all radio uh radio djs radio hosts uh not all from the united states all from the english speaking world okay and uh the first one is one that uh i used to like a lot more and now i've got to be honest i haven't really listened to him much but 
uh, from what I've heard as well, I guess I'm not being fair, but uh, his name is Howard Stern. And he was kind of one of the first radio DJs to become like a, a huge celebrity. Like, I mean, like AC, he had a movie. He has a movie called Private Parts. He basically said, that, hey, the radio DJs, you know, like a, a god. Un dio. It was crazy what he did. Really incredible. And when he was a young guy, he was pushing the limits, or as we say, pushing the envelope, no? Um, buscando esa línea siempre. And he got fired. He got a lot of problems, but he also got very, very famous. And his name is Howard Stern, severo, um, austero, rígido. But a lot of people um, are saying now, again, I can't, I can't give you my opinion, but that's the word on the street. This guy uh, used to criticize um, a certain kind of people. And now he has become that guy. Do you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people say he flip-flopped. Como hemos dicho el otro día, vimos esta palabra. He flip-flopped. And now, you know, things that he would never do or people he would never, like he would never, for example, he would never kiss an, a guest's ass. Nunca le lamería el culo. A ningún invitado, okay? He was just kind of like asking questions, like putting them up against the ropes, you know? And he asked some tough questions. But now he's just kind of like, oh, you're... So he's he's changed a lot. Uh, not the radio show so much as him as a person. And they say, I guess, that fame and he's obviously rolling in it. Está forrado. Um, because you make movies in Hollywood, you have a, a show... Uh, now, his show used to be on, on the radio, and now it's on satellite. In fact, it was the huge, you can, you can watch the whole story. I'm sure there's tons of YouTube videos. So even if you're not familiar with him, I love his voice. I used to agree with his opinions. <laughs> but uh, there's no doubt that he is, you know, definitely a juggernaut in the radio game. Next up, I was never a fan of this guy, ever, ever, ever. But he was huge. And I remember it when my dad, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I remember my dad who's, my dad's not necessarily right wing or left wing. No es ni de izquierdas de derechas. Dad, you can attest to that. Depends on what we're talking about. Like me, like, I don't, I refuse to say I'm left wing or I'm right wing. Like, what do you mean about what? And what does that even mean now? Because that doesn't mean the same thing it did 15 years ago, right? <laughs> and this guy, Rush Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh, he was like a sensation. And also because half of the country loved him, the Republicans, the, they loved the guy. They worshipped him. And the other half of the country detested him. So that makes for some interesting radio, doesn't it? <laughs> and then we've got Adam Carolla. Adam Carolla, another huge DJ. And he worked with Dr. Drew, among other people. And he had a show called Love Line. It's awesome. You can probably listen to all this stuff. It's uh, And people would call in with their love problems. So we'll take a look at these because what I'm realizing is we have to go to our next commercial break. But don't worry, folks. We'll be back in just a moment. And we'll go through the rest of these. Plus, we've got homophones, name that movie, double trouble, and so much more. So stick around. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis.
Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name on Vaughn Radio. All aboard. All right, folks, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name, second half of today's program. The first part, the first two parts just flew by, and we've got so much to do. So let's get right back into it with homophones. Homophones, homophones on the show with no name. It's homophones time, cause homophones rhyme, they sound the same on the show with no name, the show with no name. Homophones on the show with no name, cause homophones time, cause homophones rhyme, they sound the same on the show with no name, the show with no name, the show with no homophones, show with no, show with no, show with no. That's right. That's right, amigos. It's homophones only on the show with no name. And as always, this is a section where we look at words that may or may not sound the same. They tend to be a bit tricky. So as always, I'll give you the two words in Spanish. I'll also give them to you in other words in English, uh, synonyms uh, and such. And then I want to know what the two words are and if the two words sound exactly the same or not. Okay? The first word is acobardarse o acojonarse. So, pero en el pasado. So, se acojonó. Se acobardó. Se encogió de miedo. Okay? El pasado de eso. Okay? So, Uh, again, el presente es acobardarse, acojonarse, encogerse de miedo. Okay? To draw back in fear, right? Echarse para atrás como eh, de miedo. No, like, ooh, wow, right? Okay? I'm thinking of Scooby Doo again for some reason. Why? I love Scooby Doo. <laughs> so, es el pasado de eso. Okay? Se acobardó, se acojonó. Okay, se encogió de miedo. And the second word is cobarde. Yeah, cobarde, sustantivo. Okay, let's see if I can give you, and uh, 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 let's see if I can give you another word. Uh, a person who lacks courage. Okay, somebody who is not brave, a wimp. Okay, so those are the two words. En, se encogió de miedo. El cobarde. Encogerse de miedo en pasado y cobarde suenan igual o no. Do they sound exactly the same or not? Also, here's your say what soundbite for the third time. Please write down what you hear. I think New York is wonderful. It's like a dream. It always makes European cities look like villages to me. I think of a city going up, don't you? Well, it has to go to the sky. All right, there you go, folks. There you go. All right, Born to Iron Man says, FYI. Oh, your favorite podcast? Oh, no, you're saying for your information. <laughs> FYI, I use a pair of earphones, which are paired to an iPhone XR, and I've been doing spelling bees for ages. I, I got to say something. Iron Man, I can attest to that. You've been doing spelling bees. Okay, you might have good headphones or earbuds or whatever. And that is important, believe it or not, especially like me, I'm losing my hearing. Yo no oigo igual. So now, like when I'm editing, I need to wear headphones to hear those nuances. So yes, it does help. But I think the real key is I've been, and I, and I quote, Ethito, I've been doing spelling bees for ages. Keep up the great work, buddy. He says, nevertheless, you know, I've made some mistakes um, every now and then. Seen it from. 
I've made some mistakes. Ev Como ahora. I've made some mistakes every now and then. Oh, yeah, well, that's the idea, right? Right? If we don't make mistakes, then we don't learn. Then we're just kind of staying in our comfort zone. So I believe my best students are the ones that go out on a limb. Que se arriesguen. And they are not afraid to make mistakes. All right, let's see. Uh, Monse says, are today's homophones chickened out and chicken? If so, well, they're homophones. No, Monse. I like that you taught us those words, though. So he chickened out. He wimped out. He's a wimp. He's a chicken. Okay? He's a yellow belly. De hecho, eso surgió el otro día. I'm watching uh, something with my, my wife. And they said, what? She said, uh, well, they said the word yellow belly. And she goes, what is a yellow belly? And I said, un, un cobarde. You know? So, good, but that's not the one we are looking for here. Great job, though, Monse, to chicken out. Right, rajarse, I think you say. Uh, let's see. Nihad taking a stab at it. And he says the two words are mm and mm, and they're not homophones. Nope. The first word that you gave us is a good word to know. You guys are giving us some great words. You're just not giving us the two we're looking for. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, we're playing. Um, awkward. Great word. Incomodo. Oh, this is awkward. You know, estos silencios, that was an awkward silence. I feel awkward around this person for some reason. Ese es ese raro, no incómodo. So, again, the second word is cobarde, okay? A chicken, a scaredy cat. Uh, mi hija me llama así. Papi, are you a scaredy cat? <laughs> a yellow belly, a wuss. O sea, ¿quieres más formas? Estoy buscando la otra. <laughs> La que se parece cobarde en español. And a lot, of, and Nihad, I'll tell you what, you got the second word right. But the first word, hmm, that's an interesting one. And I didn't expect it to be so difficult. So let's look. I'll look at English synonyms for the first word. So to cringe, cringe, lo conocéis. Eso es cringe, repelu, cringe, lo usáis. Cringe se escribe. Okay, to flinch, to flinch is like, uh, when somebody pretends they're going to punch you, I think como si te van a dar un puñetazo and you flinch, you go, Ugh! you know, reaccionas, to flinch. Okay, to retreat, to back off, to back away, to shy away. I'm giving you a lot, but I'm not giving you the ones I'm looking for. Okay, let's see. German says, okay, German, you are on the right track. You just have to pay closer attention because the first word I gave you I want to know it in the past, not in the present. But you got the word. So, guys, piecing it together, poniendo los trozos, las piezas, juntando las piezas that Nihad gave us and that German just gave us, I think we're on to something. Creo que estamos llegando juntos, eh? This is beautiful. And I, I had this yesterday in my class, too. One student was like, I don't know. The other one gave, you know, jumped in chimed in and said, ah, se dice así. And the other one said, el otro se dice. And I'm like, see, that's teamwork. You started the sentence and you finished it. <laughs> now, you're, you're normally not going to do that in a conversation. But in an English class, help each other out. Well, you should help each other out in a conversation too. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nihad, the first word is still wrong. Okay, let's see. Born to Iron Man. He's the first one that has given us the two words as I asked for them, which is a, w w showing me something here today. This one was really difficult, wasn't it? Oh, well, yeah, it obviously was. Okay, so, but that's good. We'll, we'll demystify this in a couple seconds here. So, Born to Iron Man says the two words, congratulations. And he says, I love it. He says, they seem to sound alike. <laughs> oh, you're not going to bet your house on it, Born to Iron Man? Uh Let's see, German, those are the words. Out, I see. Now we're talking. And he's, he says, they're homophones, I think. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to call Iker Jimenez over here. This is like Cuarto Milenio. <laughs> What's going on here? We just went into a time warp. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris says, eh, 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 I don't cow. I don't know. I imagine you mean. 
Um, okay. Well, I'm just going to say both words. Let's start with the first word. I don't know why he always cowers. Cower. C-O-W-E-R is el verbo. Okay? Um, let me give you the example. Okay? The timid dog cowered in the corner. Okay? Eh, tra traducción. Ese perro tímido se acobardó en el rincón. Okay? So... The, the infinitive, to cower. Cow, like vaca, E-R. Cower. Okay? Él es más vaca que, que él. He's cower than... No, es broma. Eso no es verbo. But to cower, yeah. Again, think of... Sh I'm thinking of Scooby and Shaggy. Zoinks! <laughs> I, can, I can just imagine them in the corner, shivering, like... Ah! They're cowering. Okay? So the timid dog cowered in the corner. Ese perro tímido se acobardó en el rincón. Okay, ahora voy a decir no seas cobarde. Um, llevas toda la mañana encogido de miedo. Stop being a coward. You've been cowered in the corner all morning. Okay? He was a coward... Lo voy a juntar más. He was a coward because he cowered all day long. Do they sound the same? Absolutely. Excellent job. Teamwork over there. I'll give it to the team. All right. Coward. Yeah, interesting because I was watching a, a documentary the other day and he said coward. And I said, oh, wait a second. In, no, in mi vida. He pensado, y, y no sé, me imagino que están relacionados, right? So, to cower, to cower, right? Uh, and if you put the, if it's a regular verb, so he cowered in the corner. La diferencia es, cobarde lleva a, cowart, pero se pronuncia igual que coward. So, the coward, coward, all morning long a tough one today bastante difícil let's finish up our spelling bee really quickly and then we'll get right into name that movie as i said adam carolla also one of the first uh people to start podcasting because one thing was doing radio and another thing was doing you know podcasting very interesting uh if you want to there's an episode on fyi on podcasting uh then you've got casey Kasem. we mentioned him yesterday he was American top 40. He was the guy who read, well, today we've got a letter from Tamara who is writing us from Duluth, Michigan. She says, Tamara, I mean, you could listen to this guy for hours. And he did the voice of Zoinks Shaggy in Scooby-Doo. So Casey Kasem had to be on our, on our list next. The next one, Russell Brand. Now he, I, I never listened to him until recently. In fact, I, I subscribe to his YouTube page. Very interesting. This guy is, you, you look at him and you're like, this guy's a drug addict. Well, I think he's not. I think he's sober now. I, I believe he had a lot of problems with drugs. Russell Brand, British comedian, actor. You'll probably recognize him. And he's got a great YouTube. I'm, I mean, if, you're, if, you, if, you're, if you believe everything the mainstream media tells you, then don't watch his YouTube channel because you're going to be really disappointed. <laughs> so there's a, a a guy who started out doing jokes, you know, pranks, uh, gastando bromas. And uh, he even got in trouble for going too far. And now, as I said, he's used his platform as a celebrity to speak out against, how should I put it? Because he's not left wing or right wing. No, it's neither. I, I believe, I guess if you had to categorize him, he's maybe more left wing because he's very like, hippie, transcendental, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm stereotyping, obviously, but I think he's against people losing their rights and corporations getting away with murder. And that, that's how I, that's how I would sum up his YouTube channel. Está hasta los mm, de corporaciones, you know, making more and more money while people are losing rights and, and money and things. Very, very interesting. Uh, as my father calls these kind of programs or these kind of channels, eye openers. Te abren los ojos. And it's interesting because he was a comedian who used to take the piss, mate, que siempre estaba de, de broma, cachondeando con la gente. And now he's like, 
take care of each other, love each other, because we've got to listen to each other's voices. I mean, the guys, he's, <laughs> I love him. I, I told you, I, you might watch it and be like, this guy's nuts. Oh yeah, he's nuts. But he's speaking some truth out there and using his platform in a positive way. I believe, I believe he's trying to give power to people. Uh, again, you may agree, disagree with certain things, but uh, I thought it was an interesting turn of events in his career. The next one, speaking of controversial things, these pranks that have gone too far, the next ones are Opie and Anthony. And Opie and Anthony were a duo. They were in New York. And they got fired. They've got, they got fined like every other day. And, uh, and then, well, they went their separate ways. Um, se fueron por su camino cada uno, right? They went their separate ways. And so um, the interesting thing about this is uh, Opie follows me on Twitter. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. I wasn't, I didn't listen to them too much. I did from time to time, but they were the typical, you know, radio show where they were pulling pranks. It was comedy. It was, you know, and as with everything, sometimes you go too far. And I think they had like some kind of stunt where they, uh, they gave people a prize if they had sex in a church. And I don't think people liked that too much, you know? <laughs> one thing is laughing and joking around and some, some one thing is offending half of the, uh, the population. <laughs> so again, I believe in free speech. So you're never going to see me cancel someone. I've always, when I look at history and any lesson in history, the ones who are censoring are never the good guys. Write that down. Si no apuntas nada hoy, los que están censurando nunca pueden ser los buenos. Think about that. Okay, they think you're not, you shouldn't be able to hear things, right? All right, so Opie and Anthony. Again, hey, give them a listen. You'll find all of these. You can at least find clips of these people you can find over on YouTube. And the reason I chose these was because today in 1926, the NBC radio network opened with 24 stations. And now we know NBC is huge. It is a conglomerate. I believe it was owned by General Electric, but I don't know. Anyway, I can't keep up with all these mergers and acquisitions. A merger is una fusión and an acquisition. I think that's self-explanatory. Folks, I think we need to move on to today's Name That Movie. Name That Movie. That's right, that's right, amigos. It's Name That Movie only on the show with no name. And we'll see if you guys get today's movie. Now, remember, if you don't get it, no big deal. Chris Valrol is back. <laughs> Guess who's back? Back again. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Chris is back. Uh -huh. I can't believe, did you ever think you would be in an Eminem song, Chris? Okay, folks, here we go. You know what? I can't give you the trailer. I'm looking at it, and I just can't do that. Why? The first word in the trailer is the title of the movie. So what I'm going to do is give you an audio clue, and I'll go through the scene, and we'll see if you guys recognize the movie. All right, there's your clue coming in. <laughs> A character named the plague, la peste, la plaga, the, pe the, the plague, says our recent unknown intruder, reciente, recent, no recent, recent unknown intruder, intruder es alguien que entra a la fuerza, right? To intrude uh, is to, we looked at the word yesterday, to trespass, right? So an unknown intruder penetrated Using the super user account, usando la cuenta del super us usuario, giving him access. Quiero que pronuncies esto, no es access, ac access, access, giving him access to our whole system. 
a nuestro sistema entero. Precisely, precisamente, what you're paid to prevent. Lo que te pagan por prevenir. So he failed at his duty. And now he's being reprimanded. Now he's being chewed out. Okay? And the plague says, someone didn't bother. Alguien no se molestó. Someone didn't bother reading my carefully prepared memo. And a memo is a memorandum. Okay? Una nota. Uh, a lot of times, we, de hecho, usamos la expresión, oh, you didn't get the memo? No te dieron la noticia? No te llegó el, el memorandum? Right? So, oh, no te has enterado? You didn't get the memo? We use that expression a lot in the States. My carefully prepared memo on commonly used passwords. Contraseñas que se usan um, uh, muy comunes, ¿no? Now, then, ahora, as I so meticulously pointed out, como he destacado meticulosamente, the four most used passwords are love, sex, secret, no es secret, secret, and, and then Margot glares at the plague. And to glare es echar una mirada de esas malas. I'm glaring. Y se usa lo mismo con look at. So don't glare at me. I didn't do anything wrong. Glare. G-L-A-R-E. Como siempre digo, de las películas no solo aprendemos de, de lo que es el texto, sino de los, um, you say, indicaciones. We call them stage directions. Es, sacamos muchísimo vocabulario de ahí. Glares at the plague. And the plague says, God, so would your holiness So would your, perdona, so would your, ves como la coma es importante y no lo han puesto. Y han puesto God con minúscula. Va a caer un relámpago. A lightning bolt is going to fall right now. Down on all of us. So it says, God, so would your holiness, su eh, eh, santísimo, would your holiness care to change her password? ¿Te importaría cambiar tu contraseña? And here's the trailer. Hackers are blamed, eh, les echan la culpa. Hackers are blamed for making a virus. Y esta quiero que lo pronuncies. No es, yo sé que se escribe igual, por eso. No es virus, it's virus, virus. Y viral, viral, viral. Making a virus that will capsize, dar la vuelta a Hundir, we talk about a boat capsizing, and it sinks es hundirse. So to capsize es darle, darse la vuelta, and to sink es hundirse. That will capsize five oil tankers, okay? Uh, and an oil tanker are these boats that have these big tanks, depósitos, cisternas, maybe you would say, that are full of oil. That would not be good at all. I think Spain knows about oil spills. We're all, unfortunately, very familiar with oil spills because, as we know, there was a major one off the coast of Spain as well. So I know your opinion on that, folks. <laughs> Hackers are blamed for making a virus that will capsize five oil tankers. Well, as I said, the first word in the trailer was the movie. The movie is called Hackers, and it came out in 1995. Hey, wait a second. Chris Valrol got it. I didn't see the comment. Great job, Chris Valrol. Also, guys, a nice round of applause for Nihad. He got today's Say What Soundbite. Nice job, Nihad, on the Say What Soundbite. Excellent job, Chris on today's Name That Movie. Yeah, the last few days, uh, not too many people got the movie. So you are definitely our movie queen, or as we say, uh, a movie buff. I love this word. Buff is un amante de algo. And Chris, Chris, I said it in medio giri, medio, medio español. Chris, just like me, we are movie buffs. And the more movies you watch, the more series you watch, the more books you read, the more podcasts you listen to in English, the better you're going to get it 
you're at least comprehending. Your comprehension will improve. But then if you actually try and put it into practice, which I know most of you are doing, just imagine the progress. All right, well, folks, we have to go, I can't believe this, to our last commercial break. We have so much to do in the fourth and final part of today's show. We've got Double Trouble, Famous Birthdays, Name That Lyric, and so much more. So if I were you guys, I wouldn't even think of going anywhere. Stick around. And action. The show with no name is sponsored by Kinepolis.
Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the fourth and final part of today's show with no name. All aboard for the fourth and final part of today's extravaganza. I love that word. Extravaganza. <laughs> Hay ciertas palabras que... <laughs> Today's English extravaganza. That could be a good name for a TV show, like a game show. Donde ganas premios in English? Welcome to English extravaganza. Is it A, B, or C? Hey, guys, I think we just came up with an idea live here on the show. Hey, you guys inspire me as always. And what teacher isn't inspired by their students? I mean, anytime I'm creating content, which is most of my day, I'm thinking about you guys. I'm really like sitting there like, ooh, este le va a gustar a Iron Man. Este le va a gustar a Cristina. I swear to God, you may think I'm joking, but I'm like, ooh. Oh. A lot of times I've done that. I've, I've prepared something thinking of myself well, a lot, always. I always have you guys on my mind when I'm thinking about the lessons I'm going to prepare. So translation, you are always on my mind, even when it's time for double trouble. Double trouble, baby. Yeah, you know what time it is. Give it up. Double, double trouble. I said double, double trouble. Double, double trouble. I said double, double trouble. All right, all right. Let me start with a little disclaimer here. Don't hate me. Don't kill me. Don't uh, shoot the messenger here. Well, no, no. There is no messenger. I created this one. All right. You know why, though? I said, I, I said I've got you guys in mind. Well, I thought you would be hungry for a double, double trouble. What? Get out of here. Get out of town. Gaia. Yeah, we're doing a double double trouble today. So I hope you guys are ready for it. This is for my super show with no namers. Okay. Now, <laughs> focus cuz you say rizar el rizo. I really stirred it up here. Removí la cosa, as we say, stir it up. Él quería llevar una moledura o fresado. Okay? Now, moledura o fresado es lo que me ponía aquí en internet, ¿ok? Para que veas. Moledura o fresado. A factory that processes raw materials, ¿ok? It's also molinillo o fábrica de moneda o papel, ¿ok? So, moledura o fresado. Uh, also, uh, para papel. Molinillo, fábrica de mon donde se imprimen cosas también. Okay. And uh, it's also un molino también. So I'm giving you, I'm really helping you with that one. So él quería llevar una moledura, fresado. Vamos a decir uno más fácil. Okay. Él, porque esa palabra ni me la sé. Él quería llevar una fábrica de moneda. O una papelera. Se dice papelera igual. Papelera. Fábrica de papel es papelera, igual que basura. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks, guys. There's your double trouble. So, él quería lleve, llevar una papelera. Y no, no digo una tienda de papel. Ahora es donde se imprenta, you know, the monedas. Think of that idea there. Él quería llevar una papelera común y corriente. Llevar, manejar, ¿no? ser el dueño de... Oh, no. Are you serious? So, él quería llevar, ¿no? ser el gerente de una... Eh, tengo aquí moledura, fresado, eh, una fábrica de papel, una fábrica de monedas, que ¿okay? es un cierto tipo de fábrica. ¿okay? Y también es un molino. 
Okay, which makes sense. A lot of fábricas tenían molino para la electricidad. So if you think about it, it's all connected. Okay, so él quería llevar una fábrica con molino. <laughs> Fill in the blank, the one you'd like. Común y corriente. You have to use the same word twice, twice. O sea, no son cuatro. Es una palabra dos veces y otra palabra dos veces. Good luck, folks. And we already have a winner in today's Say What Soundbite. It was Nihad, but that doesn't mean you guys can't take a stab at it. Here it is, the Say What Soundbite for the fourth time. I think New York is wonderful. It's like a dream. It always makes European cities look like villages to me. I think of a city going up, don't you? Well, it has to go to the sky. All right, there you go, my amigos. That was the fourth and final listen, and in just a little bit, I'll be able to tell you who it is and what's being said. Well, Nihad has already given us that information, but I'll put everything into its place. Remember, that's why I say you can you can listen to this show in 2030 or in 2050, and you can still play along, right? Because at by the end of the show, by the end of each section, we solve it. So you'll be able to see if you were right or wrong. Or if you just made a little mistake and you, oh, I, I put in that too. I shouldn't have put in that too. So again, whether you're tuned in live or whether you're tuned in via podcast, which by the way, let's give a nice shout out to all, all of you who are behind the scenes. Those of you who are here day in, day out, dia tras dia, but you're not here, you're not here live, or maybe you are, but you can't participate. We know you're there, we love you, and we're sending you lots of love and lots of energy. Keep up the good work, and uh, even though I don't see you and you don't have that protagonism every day, you do, you do. I know you're there, and I appreciate all of you, each and every one of you, wherever you tune in from, right? The important thing is that you learn English with us. If you do it on the Vaughn Radio app, if you listen via podcast, if you watch live stream, whatever, just make sure you tune in and get your daily dose. Get your fix of English. Ooh, ahí tenemos un double trouble. Fix es arreglar, fix es dosis. Ooh All right. <laughs> Anybody want to take a stab at it? Remember, I'm not going to give you this sound. No os voy a poner ese, ese sonido porque es difícil. So don't worry. I think I think some people have been traumatized by that sound. No. <laughs> oh man, I think so. I, I think some people have been traumatized. There's Anna Milena. Anna, excellent job. She says the say what is not so tough. Good, good. That's good to hear. She says I'd say it's a woman, maybe an American one. She's talking about New York and the way it makes. European cities look. So esta, este error lo he visto dos veces. Cuidado, el look va después de lo que parece. So what it makes European cities, uh, the way it makes European cities look. Okay, but great, great observations, Ana. Okay, uh, let's see. We've got Leonardo taking a stab at today's spelling bee. Okay, well, Leonardo, I've got a couple comments from you. I guess, should I just get the, the second one? <laughs> um, okay, Leonardo says he wanted to... Uh, okay, but where's the double, double trouble there? Okay, so he won. You, okay, uh, so manejar, dirigir, is the word you're missing there. Para que sea un, Leonardo, by the way. It's great, but we're missing something. Okay, we're missing something there, but great because you're you're cracking that egg open. Estás rompiendo ese huevo poco a poco, and Monse is gonna grab it, and Monse is gonna say, um, "He okay, eh, ladies and gentlemen, she nailed it. Give it up for Monse. You got today's double." Double trouble. So I guess it's worth it's worth double points. You nailed it perfectly there. And Leonardo, oh, you were just missing the word dirigir to run, right? <laughs> También es presentarse. Speaking of, 
Did you guys, I woke up this morning and I'm like, oh, wait a second. Is this like, is this fake news or is Donald Trump going to run for president again? And mira, eso es otro uso de run, presentarse, right? Presentarse is to run for office. Uh, acuérdate, la preposición es tan importante como el verbo, right? Did you run for president of your student council? I ran for vice president. So excellent, excellent job there. Unbelievable. So Monse says he wanted to run. Él quería llevar, dirigir, no? ser el jefe de. A run of the mill, mill. Ahí lo tienes. So run and run and mill and mill. So he wanted to run a run of the mill mill. <laughs> See, yes. So let's look at that word mill. So a mill is an industrial grinder, moledor, molino. It's also a windmill, es un molino de estos de aire, a windmill, right? A paper mill, de hecho, my, one of my mom's favorite theaters is called the Paper Mill Playhouse. And it's because it used to be a paper mill, una fábrica de eh, papel. So, otra vez, I think if you think about it, it's a, it's a specific kind of factory, okay? Again, here it says, eh, molinillo, Um, fábrica de moneda, de moneda, papelera, eh, 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 mill, moledura, fresado, un sitio. So the mill processes lumber from the forest. La moledura procesa la leña del bosque. Okay, there you go, my amigos. Oh, and molinillo de café. We would call it a, a coffee grinder, but some people call it a coffee mill. Y un molino harinero, a flour mill, right? So run of the mill, esto es con, con guiones. Run of the mill means nada, norm, nada especial. Normal y corriente. Run of the mill. So, wow, Monse. Well, if double trouble is normally one of the hardest sections... And then you got to make it a double, double trouble. Well, kudos, kudos. Great job to all of you. And I think I'm going to reward you with one of my fantastic jokes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. That's the reward, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What did the guy say when he walked into the bar? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. You get it? Ouch! He walked into the bar. <laughs> um, you're joking. That's right, amigos. That's right. You're joking only on the show with no name. And this is where we're going to take a look at a joke. And all you have to do is tell me the two meanings, or three, depending, in this joke. All right? So don't just tell me, esto significa esto. But tell me, Esto significa esto y esto, right? That's what double meanings. It would be like, if you just tell me one meaning, it's like just doing double trouble with one word, not repeating it. So here we go, amigos. Why was the cell phone wearing glasses? That doesn't really sound like a cell phone, does it? <laughs> I like that sound better. I miss that sound. So why was the cell phone, or if you're British, why was the... The mobile? Why was your mobile? My mobile. Why was the cell phone wearing glasses? Oh, y ojo con esta, amigos. Do you know how many times I've had students ask me for my phone? Me han pedido mi móvil. And I'm like, no. No way. I got all my information. Forget it. Forget it, man. And they were like, well, how do I call you? I'm like, well, I'll give you my number. But I'm not going to give you my phone. You're nuts. <laughs> If you think I'm going to give you. My phone. So, cuidado con ese false friend, right? We don't say, give me your phone. We say, give me your number. So, why was the cell phone wearing glasses? Because it lost all its contacts. <laughs> no. Did you get it at least? Even though the joke fell flat? <laughs> El chiste fracasó. Why was the cell phone wearing glasses? 
it lost its contacts. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Let's see if you were able to explain. Well, first, if you got it, and secondly, if you can explain it for everybody else in the class. All right. Um, hmm. So I guess there has to be a double meaning here of the word contacts, right? Hmm. Okay, I think maybe the... Okay, eh, we've got... Uh, let's see. German says contacts is eye contacts, which they're not called eye contacts, but oh, bien, te, te entendido. We call them contact lenses. Okay, pero se puede decir corto, contacts. Do you wear contacts? Or do you wear contact lenses? Right? Eso es, llevas... Eh, como lo acabo de decir, como se dice esto... Um, um, I forget the word in Spanish. Bueno, da igual en español. In English, they're called contact lenses, or for short, contacts. And obviously, the people in your phone are your contacts, tus contactos. So do you get it? Why was the cell phone wearing glasses? It lost its contacts. <laughs> Uh, Monse is explaining it too. Monse says, ha ha, it's funny because contacts means all the numbers you have in your phone, but also means lentes de contacto. That's the word, lentes. And that's why he can't see. Awesome. Great job, guys. Hey, that's it, it seems like a stupid, corny joke, but just the fact that you can understand jokes in English, I mean, I think that's something worth celebrating. So let's celebrate it in today's famous birthday trivia. That's right, that's right, amigos. It's famous birthdays only on the show with no name. And let's see if you recognize today today's celebrity birthdays. The first person was born in 1955, and he was he is. I'm killing the guy, poor guy. He's an English pop singer, songwriter, and percussionist. Okay. Best known as being a member of the band The Thompson Twins. Thompson, I remember, I, I wasn't a big fan, but I remember their music being pretty popular. And I remember it being popular in Spain, too, some of the songs. So the Thompson twins, Los Gemelos Thompson. And this guy joined the band in 1981 after being one of their roadies. A roadie is somebody who's on their road crew. Oh, and his, me encanta cuando funciona así. His last name is Margen. No te puedo dar más Margen, lo siento. So his last name is eso, me encanta. <laughs> Uh, so, Café Margen. Si quieres saber su nombre, es una forma de decir Café, su primer nombre, y su apellido es Margen. Café Margen. En mi vida no hay margen. Sin café no hay nada. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. Number two, this guy was born in 1972, uh, an English-American actor. Uh, he played the role of sick boy in train spotting. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, he was also in train spotting too. He was in Endgame, Afterglow. Um, he uh, also earned the Olivier Award for Best Actor as well. And uh, great, talented, very talented actor. Um, of course, I think most of us met him through or were introduced to him through the movie Train Spotting. But then he's gone on to do huge movies, um, such as End Game, which, as we know, is a huge blockbuster. All right. And last but not least, this woman was an American painter and educator. She was born in 1887, and she passed in 1986. She was known for her paintings of huge flowers, okay? 
Some of them even looking like the female genitalia. I'm sure you'll know her work. Um, also, New York skyscrapers, which we looked at that word before. New Mexico, so the, the Wild West in the United States. Uh, they often call her the mother of American modernism. Okay, and she's a fascinating, she was a fascinating individual. Okay, I remember studying her in art class. And uh, if you're not familiar, you'll definitely have to check out her work because if you like nature, if you, she mixes like humanity with nature, which is, isn't that what we're trying to do? Become one with nature. So she does that. And well, there's a reason she is known as the mother of American modernism. The first person in today's birthday list is Joe Leeway. Well, Joe is cafe. Can I have a cup of Joe? That's un, un cafe. And leeway. <laughs> I'm not going to give you any more leeway. No te voy a dar más margen. Number two. Number two, Johnny Lee Miller. And we looked at the word mill in depth, in profundidad. And last but not least, Georgia O'Keeffe. If you're not familiar with her, check her out. Fascinating individual. Georgia O'Keeffe, who is today say what soundbite and this was an interview with her when she was elderly already ya era vieja you can hear it in her voice and she's she's reflecting right as we say reflecting on her life and she says i think new york is wonderful creo que nueva york es maravilloso it's like a dream es como un sueño it always makes European cities look like villages to me. Hace que los, las ciudades europeas parezcan pueblos para mí. I think of the city going up. O sea, ella piensa, piensa en crecimiento como subir, no expandir. So I think of a city going up. Don't you? Subiendo. Well, it has to go to the sky. Tiene que ir hacia el cielo. So you can see, not just uh, an artist because of her photography, her painting, but also an artist with words, as we say, a wordsmith. All right, this is birthday girl, Georgia O'Keeffe. Hey, I think New York is wonderful. It's like a dream. It always makes European cities look like vi villages to me. I think of a city going up, don't you? Well, it has to go to the sky. All right, folks, Georgia O'Keeffe in her own words. And it's time for today's Name That Lyric. Hi, hello, Alberto. I think the song is... <laughs> no? Sorry, bye. Name that lyric, name that lyric, name that lyric, name that lyric. Only on the show with no name, the show with no name, the show with no name. Name that lyric, only on the show with no name, the show with no name. That's right, amigos. It's name that lyric only on the show with no name. And folks, we have reached the end of today's show. We just have a couple minutes left. I want to thank you for being here today and every day. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your drive. Lo vimos antes, motivación. And uh, sometimes I don't give you any leeway. La palabra que vimos hace poco, but it's because I expect the best of you. I expect the most of you. And you guys give that every day. So just wanted to tell you keep up the great work. Seriously. All right. And uh, and this is a, a beautiful song. It's a band I'm not too familiar with, but one of the things that I like to do here on the show with no name too is not just choose things that I like, but also choose things that I'm not familiar with as much. This way, you guys aren't the only ones learning. I get to learn as well. So I'll give you the song because we only have, we have less than a minute. It's Hold Me Now by the Thompson Twins. Hold Me Now with Joe Leeway, right? And we already said his name. And he says, I have a picture pinned to my wall. No, eh, pegado eh, with a pin a la pared. 
an image, no image, dilo conmigo, image, an image of you and of me. And we're laughing. Nos estamos riendo. And we love it all. We're loving it all. But look at our life now. Pero mira nuestra vida ahora. Tattered and torn. Tattered es roto en trozos. Torn. Uh, right? Otra forma. Oh, a lot of ways to say en roto here. Uh, folks, I can't believe it, but we've got to play the song right now or we're going to run out of time. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. As always, thank you for your energy, your effort. Don't forget, up next, we've got the one and only Jules and her amazing program, Let's Get Random. Thanks. Hold me now. I have a picture. Ow! It's pinned to my wall. 